Hi, my name is Mike with Connecticut Sea Grant and Yukon Extension, and today we are visiting a Connecticut oyster farm to learn more about the process of growing oysters from sea to market size in a floating bag aquaculture system. I'm Will. Uh, I grew up in Mystic, right where we are now. Growing up here, I've always seen the whole culture of the industry, but never really knew how to get involved in it. I didn't really know you could get involved in it. Like, well, how do you get a lease in the water? Are they even leases? Do you own the water? How do you put gear in the water? Can you put gear in the water? Like, what are the practices on that? I'm Jason and uh, I'm a co-owner of Six Penny Oyster Farm. Uh, a big piece of advice I would give to anybody um, interested in the industry is, uh, you know, go work on a farm for at least one to two years. Learn on a, on a farm that already has uh, sort of their stuff together. Even things as simple as like driving a boat or, uh, you know, operating a tumbler or whatever it may be. While we were kind of opening this, we were both still on Fisher's Island. Uh, but quickly things elevated and it was clearly our time to forge our own path and that's when we finally came out here and started it as a hobby. You know, I left Fisher's Island completely. I then started working uh, more in the restaurant industry, doing like shucking stuff, you name it, whatever to do, get the paycheck. But we were coming out here on the weekends. This was our weekend hobby. I was coming out here, we had probably like 30 bags, we were growing a couple thousand oysters, and it was truly just an experiment, which I recommend, it's like the best way to start. You know, you can always put all your cards in whatever, all your eggs in one basket, uh, but it was nice for us to have that diversification where we still had supplemental income from other jobs while we were figuring this out, because it's not like you can take one site and replicate it exactly. It's gonna be different every way. We purchased our seed from Fisher's Island mid to late April, and then that next morning, you know, it's like sun up to sundown, basically getting help as much people out here as possible that are willing to help us just load as many bags, put PVC on, and we're just doing runs out here, just filling it up. You know, we're grabbing seed. We're finding our smaller mesh. Generally, it'll be like this or smaller to start. Um, and that's when we do our count. You know, we get it, we do our live dead, and we did a stocking at 400. 400 oysters. So we get our seed, we come out here, we fill it, and then it's like, okay, break time, you know? We're done for a little bit. And then it's just the growing. So it's just coming out here and basically tending to last year's product while constantly monitoring what we have out here that's growing. And that's when we got to a point where at the first time we actually handled it was we flipped it over and we saw they were growing into the bags. And we're like, all right, put the boots on, hop with the little mutters, grabbed our PVC pipes, hopped in the water, and we flipped through every bag, scraped them all down, gave them a dry the next morning, took them, shake them, freed them all out, and let them sit again. After that, we started noticing them really start to grow up, and we started, we brought them to the tumbler, and we're like, all right, probably we're about a 50% retention here. 50% will go through the tumbler, 50% will fall through. Seems like a good time to start tumbling the product. And we just started doing that, and that's when we really started like getting differences in our lines, starting to separate the groups finally. Once we did that, then it was okay, now we need to reduce the stocking density. Because they've gotten so big at this point, we have our different groups and sizes, so now we're able to take our seed, especially you know when we are sorting for the seed, you know we're buying you know, half inch product or whatever, we're putting it through, it sorts it for us. So not only chipping the oysters, cleaning them, making them pretty, getting them off of that mud, um, and sorting it. So obviously the smaller oysters are gonna fall through the tube and they're gonna fall into these little collection buckets here uh, while the larger stuff is then retained, which goes out the end, which you can see right there. Based off of that, we're doing different uh, counts and sort uh, and putting them into different size mesh bags. So obviously the stuff that's retained out, we settled on, I think we're happy with 250 oysters per bag at this point. So we'll count out a 250, get that volume, say it's a gallon, two gallons, whatever it may be. That's when then we're loading these bags back up at that and re-putting them back out there. And then the smaller stuff that goes through, we're doing, you know, maybe we're putting it at 400 because it's smaller. So we're not as worried about the stocking. So then we're stocking them a little bit higher. 
Um, and yeah, it's just basically going through that over and over. But I mean, it's just an amazing tube and there's so many different applications you can use for it. Not only just like the tumbling, but you can literally do it just to clean your product or just to chip down your product, which is kind of what we're doing now. It gives us an opportunity versus pulling them out of the mud, dumping them, being in mud, getting our counts, maybe giving them a little inefficient wash in the basket and then putting them right back in. This really helps mitigate those processes of getting rid of the mud and other like, you know, pests, I guess you could call. Um, off of the oysters. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.